everyone. My name is Paola, and today I have a very special guest, Natalia. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us why we're here? Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm Natalia Sylvester. I'm the Peruvian American author of two novels for adults and uh, two novels for young adults. My last one called Running was my debut YA novel. And my next YA novel is called Breathe and Count Back from 10. And it's a story that's very close to my heart. Um, it's about a Peruvian American teen who has hip dysplasia. She was born in Peru. She grew up in central Florida, which is home to um, a mermaid theme park. Well, the summer before her senior year of high school, she learns that they're having auditions and they need new mermaids. And this has always been a dream of hers, but also a secretly kept dream of hers because um, her parents have a very um, strict kind of uh, background, also a very specific idea of what they want her future to look like. They've really bought into this idea of the American dream. They don't really think that a mermaid is something appropriate for her. At the same time, she's also falling in love for the first time. She's navigating wanting to feel safe and accepted in her own body, navigating a lot of medical issues having to do with her hip dysplasia and um, all the surgeries that she grew up um, having. It's really a story that um, just explore the bodily agency and the ways that that Vero is really trying to find ways to to no longer fear who she truly is and to no longer feel like she can't be seen for who she truly is. I love that. That's a great pitch. And honestly, you just say mermaids and I'm there. Like I, <laughs> I, I love that. I am in love with the idea of performing as a mermaid, I would have totally auditioned if that had been a thing when I was younger. So you mentioned, you talked about uh, Vero's hip dysplasia um, and on the Goodreads page of the book, you wrote, I used to hide my scars and now they're on the cover of my book. Um, so what's rewarding about having Vero's story out in the world? There's so much. Oh my gosh. Vero's story was very much inspired by my own. Um, I was born in Peru with hip dysplasia. We moved to the United States when I was very young. Um, I had many surgeries growing up and I had one um, last month actually as well. Um, so, but growing up, especially, I was very, very insecure about my scars. Um, I had several, um, and not just my scars, but just the way that I walked, the way that my body wasn't necessarily... Um, symmetrical is as, as people love to say when we talk about beauty as if it's a standard we have to live up to. And so it was really important for me, for her to not have to hide in the way that I tried to hide my body when I was growing up. Um, because I think I, like, you know, I was really made to feel like there was something wrong with it and I was made fun of and, you know, all sorts of just really horrible things that I'm sure a lot of people would relate to if they have ever lived outside of a very narrow way that society likes us to exist. You know, even um, when my publisher was in the process of getting the book cover done, uh, I sent them the picture, a picture of my own scars because I was, it was just really important for this story to feel true. And for, like I said, for Rito not to have to hide the way that I did. And what's been so rewarding is that even though it's deeply personal, it feels like as I was writing the story, because it was so personal, I had to create some distance mm -hmm. from You know, I couldn't just write like literally my life. Um, I had to be able to let Vero become her own person. You know, I had to let her parents, her friends, her um, her boyfriend, everyone um, be their own person, be um, people that I felt like um, that I could also get lost in and, and, and almost in the way of creating them in the ways that I wished that maybe I'd experience, you know, the things that she does, the things that she learns, those are things that I probably needed when I was her age, that I, it's like, it's like, she's like the friend I wish I had, you know, if she's not the person I wish I'd been back then, she's definitely like the best friend I wish I had. To create that distance was actually really healing. It was like the difference between what if I'm just only writing my own story and revisiting old wounds versus how can I make that story evolve into something that will actually be very healing for me and hopefully in the process be healing for other people who are reading it as well. I love that. That's a, that's a really heartwarming, but also very like empowering message. And you can feel that in the book, like your heart is in it. And I love that. As you also mentioned, and it's in the synopsis and everything, um, Vero has like a strange relationship with her parents because, you know, she's nearing adulthood she's trying to break out of 
her shell. So how do you open the window into understanding complicated parent-child relationships mm -hmm. in your books? Because you also had this in running. Um, and how do you get your characters to break free from those like strict rules? I love that you asked that question because you're right. Like it is definitely something I find myself coming back to. Um, even in my adult novels, I find that I've explored that as well. Um, but definitely in YA, it was a very different approach because I know I knew that I couldn't write Vero as a 17-year-old, you know, maybe necessarily giving the same kind of perspective or sympathy to her parents as I might, or not even sympathy, but like the same kind of level of understanding. Um, as I might have as an adult, only because, you know, because we get older, you know how adults love to like tell teens something like, oh, don't worry, like this when you're older, it's not going to be as much of a problem. And we like belittle their problems. But we actually can forget as we become older and hopefully more independent, um, we can forget what it felt like to feel so, to, to feel not in control of our lives, to not have that agency. Um, so I try really hard to live in that and remember that and understand that about Vero. While at the same time, understanding, okay, I know where her parents are coming from. I know where, where their, what their experiences are, are that are leading to the actions they have. But can I look at both the, the, the kid, the, you know, Vero's experiences and actions and the parents' experiences and actions and try to come at it from a place of understanding, but not necessarily also judging or excusing you know, like, don't judge the mistakes, but don't excuse them either. Like, can we just, like, maybe just try to be true to them? And it's also very relatable. Like, I don't have hip dysplasia. My parents were not as protective as Vero's. But I can, but uh, you definitely feel that, like, suffocating, like, oh, why don't you let me live my life sort of thing with your mm -hmm. parents when you're a teen. So yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that it's becoming more of a thing in, in YA. Yeah. So if your uh, 17 year old self could see you now, what would she say? Oh my God, I love this question too. Okay, I love that you asked this question because I can be really critical of myself. Mm. Um, even today, you're right. Like, I mean, me as in present self. And I have a lot of anxiety around like, am I even doing enough or, you know, I can be super, like I said, I can be super critical of myself. And you asking me that realized, made me realize that like my 17 year old self would just not have even dared to dream, but like to be the person I am today, to have like, be able to write and have books. And like, I don't think she had ever even crystallized that dream or dared to think it. Or if it was, it was like in the very back of her mind. So I think that maybe she would just say like wow <laughs> and I hope that she would gain the confidence to then keep dreaming more of those secret big dreams love that so this is the fill in the blank section the first book I loved was I think it was the Berenstain Bears I was obsessed like my mom would take me to the library and I would check out every single Berenstain Bear book I could get and the first book I bought with my own money was I don't remember because like I said, I went to the library a lot, but I think it was probably a babysitter's club book. My first book idea was. Does an essay count? Because see, I didn't really start writing fiction until I was in college. I, the first thing I tried to publish was actually an essay about my hip dysplasia and growing Ooh. up with, you know, having um, a lot of my, I, I just, I wrote a whole essay about my surgeries. I tried to send it to like 17 magazine or something. Uh, it didn't get published, but does that count? Ooh, boo, 17 magazine. <laughs> But that's so cool. That's so cool. I love the initiative. The song that reminds me the most of my book is... Oh, well, there's this song called Edge of the Ocean by Ivy. And like the title suggests, it's very watery. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just think of that a lot, like the watery vibes, which I always equate with freedom and just really like, like a lot of peace and calm. If you were a book, what section of the bookstore would you live in? Why A, obviously. <laughs> I can't think. <laughs> That's a good one. You write really good YA books, so you. You, you do belong there. Um, <laughs> and finally, what do you hope readers take away from Breathe and Count Back from 10? I have the hardest time answering these questions, this, this one in particular, but honestly, I just feel, I hope that whatever part of them needs to feel seen the most is seen in some way. I love that. Do you have anything else that you would like to plug? No, I can't think of anything. I'm just really glad and happy grateful to be here so thank you for inviting me yay i'm glad thank you so much for doing this with me it means a lot to me um i like that i match your cover a little bit with like the the font mostly i think i think you almost got it like perfect 
It's such a beautiful yeah. cover. I thank love it so much. People at home, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the description below for buy links and ways to support Natalia. And yes, we will see you hopefully in another one soon. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.